Sometimes it's important to understand how those who oppose you politically think. And that's one of the reasons I enjoy actually reading The Guardian. The Guardian newspaper is a repository for extreme left-wing thought. And whilst it's not a, a serious uh, publication, it, it's more like a comic, but with the vocabulary suited to those who have done uh, gender studies, for example, at university and found themselves a gig writing trash. It can't be beaten. So on that basis, I wanted to share this, in, this article, which uh, amused me and also interested me over uh, on The Guardian today by Nezreen Malik. I'm going to put it up now. And Nezreen informs us that compulsory worship of national symbols is the sure sign of a culture in decline. Mm, I think you've lost me at that sentence even, Nezreen, because of course what you're doing is you're deliberately conflating compulsory worship with respect and indeed potential admiration. So for example, if a nation admires its symbols, then in Tenezrin's mind, that's a culture in decline. The reverse is true. But let's let's dig into her argument because it is quite interesting. Uh, and she says, it starts up, those who thinks we think our flags and statues must be protected from blasphemers have taken a step down a sinister road. Well, it depends. What do you mean by protected? Do you mean should you be al allowed to burn our flags and topple over our statues? If you were suggesting that, Nazarene, and I'm not saying you are, but if you were, then you're the person who would have been who'd have who's taken a step down a sinister road. But let's start with the article. It starts actually off quite interestingly because in it she argues here in the first paragraph, in the first couple of paragraphs, basically that. Um, you know, depictions of the Prophet Muhammad are forbidden in Islam. Although people say that, there's actually artwork around bearing his image. And she relates a medallion in the uh, museum in, in Amsterdam, a Persian miniature in the Metropolitan in New York. Um, and what she's really saying is, uh, and I kind of go with this, that the prohibition of images of Muhammad that we see nowadays are a, a distinctly modern edict. And she questions her religious justification for them. This is her saying it, not me. She says this, but I agree with her. And uh, she had then talked about this was, uh, so she talks about that, which seems fair enough. She goes on the next paragraph, by the way, to blame the uh, African and Southeast Asian. Uh, she apparently colonial forces. Whoops, we're in the Guardian now. We're in the recesses. Uh, the colonial forces forced people to become part of the um, embrace Islam as their only common denominator. Yeah, I don't think so. Don't think so at all. But then we get to the <clears throat> we really get to the core of her article and what I wanted to talk about. You see, she says the more a society is preoccupied with its symbols, the more insecure it has become. No, the more a society. Uh, a nation state uh, is proud of its symbols, the more confident it has become. And she doesn't like that. And so she goes on to complain about the fact in the UK, <clears throat> the Conservative uh, government um, has seized upon this veneration of national symbols. Uh, and what's annoying her here is, of course, the decision by the government to fly the, in fact, I'll just bring it down here. This government has decreed, sorry, this government has decreed that after uh, next summer, after this summer, the union flag should fly over all government buildings every day of the year rather than 20 days a year. No longer is it just jolly bunting on special occasions. And then you can see Nigel, Trigger, Nigel Farage brought, is brought into the argument because uh, she's so triggered about the fact that he took a union flag with him into the European Parliament. Um, now, he, he, here's you know, heads up, Nezrin. This is Britain. The union flag is our flag. Government buildings are expression of our well and our, our, our government. So it's absolutely natural that government buildings would fly our national flag 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. If you can't handle that, Nezreen, <clears throat> maybe, maybe you know, you need to consider, are you in the right country if you're so unhappy? She goes on to say, and this is what I also I spotted. Um, she talks about this, this issue here. 
Uh, talking about statues, we are not meant to study and scrutinize a figure such as Winston Churchill. Oh, yes, you are. You can study and scrutinize him all you want. And then she says, he's now an icon who must be protected from blasphemers. Again, strange use of terminology. People who don't like Churchill are not blasphemers. They are just people who don't like Churchill. I don't know why, because I imagine most people around today, you know, weren't alive when Churchill was here. So what she's perhaps saying is that um, people don't like what they have read Churchill stood for. Well, he stood for Britain when we faced the Nazi threat back in uh, in 1939. But maybe she's forgot. Maybe her history doesn't go back that far. But the point is, I believe people should be allowed to criticise Churchill if they want. And I also think other people should be allow allowed to venerate him and appreciate his massive contribution to Britain. She talks about Britain's statues are now symbols of national anxiety. No, they're not. Britain's statues are now targets. They're now targets for those who, as we saw in Bristol, given half the chance, and if they're allowed to, will topple them over. We saw the Churchill statue outside Parliament being defaced by a baying mob, by the way. So we, so again, massive conf conflation going on here. At the end of the day, Brit the British flag is a clear and visible symbol of the fact this is Britain. Our statues are a clear and visible uh, evidence that we have, a pr we have a history. Some people might not like that history. Then again, you'd wonder, if people don't like our flag and don't like our history, what are they doing here? What, what is their contribution to Britain going to be if they can't stand any outward representation of our state? You got to wonder about that. Uh, about that, and 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 she, you know, she goes on to finish with, oh, well-known Irish nationalist John Hume. You can't eat a flag, said John Hume. Well, of course he's right, and I don't suppose Mr. Hume ever had to eat a flag, but he did seem particularly fond of the Irish, uh, the Irish flag, the Irish tricolour. Uh, I've met John Hume, by the way, and, and spoken with John Hume, so I know of that which I speak. I wonder has Nazarene. I doubt it, but you know, ultimately. To, 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 she's, she's getting two things mixed up here. And it goes back up to the heading of the whole article, which is this thing about compulsory worship. Worship is associated with a religion, it tends to be associated with religion or cults, right? That's what religion, that's what compulsory worship is about. Respecting the outward signs of a state, that's not, that's not worship. She doesn't seem to understand that. The two things are very different. Respecting a state, showing an appreciation of that state, even if there's aspects of it you don't like, that's all called respect. And that's the one thing that is absolutely missing from the political left. Let's be clear about it and call it out for what it is. They despise this country. They despise our, despise our history. They despise many of our giant gargantuan political leaders that we've had, like Winston Churchill. And so what they do is they spew out their poison in the likes of The Guardian, where they know it will be lapped up with the low IQ individuals and self-haters who read that publication. Or at least that's my view. Maybe you think differently. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll catch up with you folks real soon.